Welcome back to Donington Park for this Motors TV live race day. David Addison and Charlie Butler Henderson looking forward to the first of two races for pre-war sports cars supplied by the Vintage Sports Car Club. We're on Twitter here at Donington during the course of the day, at Jenny Gow or at Addison1972. And to answer one question posed on Twitter, there isn't a DRS zone for these cars, rest assured. The cars making their way for what's going to be a standing start up towards uh, McLean's corner. And it is the delectable Alfa Romeo that's on pole position in the hands of Neil Twyman, his uh, 8C. And lining up alongside is the Morgan three-wheeler of Sue Derbyshire, celebrating her birthday today. It is a very eclectic mix of cars indeed that's been provided by the VSCC for this, but this is going to be a very entertaining race. And she actually drives her car to work, did you know that? So um, yeah, she's, um, she's a, a very, very quick lady, so looking forward to um, seeing her in action in this um, fantastic uh, race that we've got coming up now. These cars are awesome, I've been talking to some of the drivers um, throughout the day. Got a good on board here at the moment, so you can see just how high the car is sitting up. Of Nicholas Pellet, he was telling me he's just using sort of third and fourth gear really around this Donington. But the standing start, they can be fairly aggressive. They are pushing these cars to the absolute limit, but the clutches and gearboxes they do need to just be a little bit careful with, really. So we'll be keeping a little bit of an update for you and doing some onboard footage throughout this race as well, so you can see how they're soaring at these massive steering wheels as they're driving around the lovely, beautiful, flowing Donington Park. It's that car that Nick Pallet has, third in the 1932 Le Mans 24 hours when Brian Lewis and Tim Rose Richards drove it. The car on pole position is Neil Twyman's Alfa Romeo 8C and it is a quite magnificent car restored over a long, long period by Neil and Craig Twyman and that will line up on pole position having been only three tenths quicker in fact in qualifying should qualifying times matter much in the SEC races than the Morgan three-wheeler of Sue Derbyshire but you can expect it to be a battle between those two and the car, as I say, the 8C Muletto, rebuilt using as many original parts as possible. Uh, the unusual body, uh, called a Bacchae, uh, used in long road races like the Targa Florio, and later on many of those cars modified into Touring or Zagato Spiders. So the grid's starting to form up, standing start, but for VSCC cars it's going to be a flag start, not lights. Uh, behind them on the second row of the grid you've got John Guyatt, uh, who will go well with his uh, Torbett 105, and then also you've got Josh Beebe, who's done quite a bit of modern racing in single-seaters, as well as uh, Masters Historics in a Ford Mustang, and he's going to be another man to watch then as this race gets underway. So the 20 minutes of pre-war sports car racing about to be unleashed grid I think is complete everybody present and correct it's going to be a rather different pace from that that we saw in the caterums but you can still expect some pretty fierce racing the vintage sports car club which organizes not just circuit racing but also uh, sprints and trials a very very active club and the first of its two races about to get underway now is it going to be an Alfa Romeo or a Morgan then that leads on the run down toward Redgate let's find out the flag is dropped the Alfa struggles away and through from the second row of the grid John Guy leads the way and then Neil Twyman gets the Alfa Romeo all hooked up he goes thundering away but a really tough start I'm afraid there well this is going to be a fantastic race because he really was setting the pace in qualifying so seeing him soaring through the um, the eight or ten that's passed through him is going to be absolutely brilliant so seeing him scything through the field very shortly is going to be a great race so on board with the Talbot 105 team car going through Crane is just listening to that real roar of that engine in that Talbot so as they come downhill for the first time, then it's John Guyatt who leads the way from the second row of the grid. And Sue Derbyshire going with him. Look, the uh, cheeky looking Morgan three-wheeler there as the cars turn their way out of the old hairpin. These cars familiar around Donington Park, the VSCC, regular visitors to Donington Park as the cars climb uphill then for the first time, heading up now through towards Schrantz Curve. So Neil Twyman, after that very, very slow start, has left himself with huge amounts of work to do. But it's John Gart then who leads the way. And Sue Derbyshire looking to celebrate her birthday here in fine style, running in second place. Those two just edging away from the rest. As there you can see, a pace is gained by Nick Pellet on the inside coming out of the claims. Yeah, these are some big old beasts, as you can see there. And those of you that haven't really watched them, some um, historic and vintage car stuff. This, these guys really are pushing to the absolute limit. They're not giving any space to each other at all. Um, and they do have a lot of rivalry, but a great time as well. So our onboard car there, scything through the field. Is he going to get on the brakes later than the car in front? Let's wait and see. Just touching about 100 miles an hour now as we approach the newly redesigned chicane here at Donington Park, making the straight. Ooh. And off, I'm afraid, at the end of the first lap has gone Andrew Bush. The Riley is in the gravel, and 
and he's not going to get out of there in a hurry, I fear. So John Guys, it is then leading Sue Derbyshire in third place. Coming over the line is Trevor Sweet in the Invicta as the leaders turn their way now onto the top of the Craner Curves. John Guyatt, who is one of the driving forces really behind uh, this era of racing within the VSCC, encouraging more and more cars out because of the way that the races are run with uh, different classes or handicap races, for example. Uh, so he's uh, done a huge amount of good to bring more and more of these cars into competition again in recent years. But Sue Derbyshire up front now as the cars head down towards the Craner Curves, the Morgan three-wheeler, only half a second back at the end of the lap, leading the way now as there is John Guyatt in the top at Largo in second place. Yeah, a little bit concerned that our race might get ruined by, maybe by a constant yellow flag at the chicane or possibly a safety car while they get that car out of the way because it is in quite a prominent, um, dangerous position there. But as you can see, Sue in the car number 10 car wheeling her way through McLean's there. I said to her, what was it like driving uh, a three-wheeled car uh, in comparison to a four-wheel? And she said, I don't know. I haven't raced anything <laughs> else but the three-wheeled car that she's in now. So um, fair play to her and, um, you know, big up girl power to her. Have, maybe have a win would be fantastic for her. Absolutely. And the VSCC does on occasion, it has to be said, run pure Morgan three-wheeler races under an ACU permit. So they have a passenger, like a sidecar would, for example. This is a replay of how Sue Derbyshire got ahead coming over the line and just goes storming up on the inside. Uh, John Guy possibly with a problem, looks down at the front of the car. That was quite good actually, as he's been passed by a young lady, looks down at his car pretending that he's got a problem. I quite like that, maybe a tactical move there, but fair play to her, she's really going well, having a quick look behind her there, just seeing what gap she's built up. Still no sign of a, of a safety car with that stricken car there at the chicane, so that's good news for her. It's an enormous gap. I mean, there's nobody else in sight virtually. It was a long, long time before anybody else came out of the chicane. So the uh, Talbo Largo in second place of John Guyatt, the uh, cars having been really born out of Derrick in the 1930s when the company was taken over by Anthony Largo and with a lot of support from the French government who were hugely enthusiastic about the racing. Now after its bad start, the Alfa Romeo of Neil Twyman is up into seventh place and has just done the fastest lap of the race. So that, with still 16 more minutes of the race to go, is becoming a car to watch. Yeah, the fastest lap and a good six seconds faster than our leader, car 10, Derbyshire. So uh, I think we're definitely going to be seeing a little bit of a battle. She's not going to give that lead up easy. So um, all good stuff so far with the a back marker coming through. We've also got the uh, Delahaye 135 of Ralph Robbins here. Sir Ralph Robbins, if you wish, the chairman of Rolls-Royce and Bentley coming over the line. The type of car that had a Monte Carlo rally win in 1937, uh, had a Le Mans 24 hour win in 1938. Uh, and he is turning his way now through Redgate Corner. Yeah, he's taking Redgate in third gear. I had a chat with him earlier. He's been having a, a few carburetor problems. The car is... You hear them. Yeah, the car's popping and back. Just as I said that, commentator's curse. Um, he's been having a few problems, so bless him. He's, he, he was pleased to be out for this race. And you can see these guys aren't strapped in. They're pretty much hanging out of the car. Massive steering wheel, still wearing all the fireproof clothing, as you would expect. But that car is obviously playing up, so don't know whether that's a terminal problem for race Two. And in problems in the pit lane is Robin Toon's Alfa Romeo 1750. You have to understand with it being an Alfa Romeo that there isn't a mechanical problem. It is purely so everybody can admire it um, and it will go much quicker in race two when people have drooled all over it. Now, the Morgan three-wheeler continues to lead. Now, what was an enormous gap last time is nothing at all. And here now comes Neil Twyman up into the lead. I think he's going to go booming past the Morgan, isn't he, on the outside line there. So after his pock start, Neil Twyman leads the way as he comes down towards Redgate Corner. Car preparer, very, very good racer indeed in this sort of car, Neil Twyman. His son Joe, uh, a leading light in historic racing and about to go modern GT racing as well this year uh, in the Blanc Pan Endurance Series for GT cars. So a busy racing family, the Twymans. And the Alfa Romeo, having qualified on pole position, now leads the way once more, heading downhill. This is lap number four, 14 minutes of the race to go. Sue Derbyshire trying to get back up front, breaks as late as she possibly can, going into the old hairpin has that for an eclectic sight, the Alfa Romeo dwarfing the Morgan as they climb now up towards Schwantz Curve. Yeah, there is a massive size difference, but she's not giving in at all. So um, he's got a lot of power, a lot of weight. She's got um, not much power, but also not much weight at all. So as they climb their way up towards McLean's corner, she's a lot more nimble through the corners in the Morgan in comparison to the, the struggling starting um, Alfa Romeo. But um, that watching that in practice earlier on that really does thunder down the yeah. pit straight 2.6 litre supercharged engine the Alfa Romeo 8C a car from 1932 and the Morgan comes through then behind now in a straight line I fear that car may well lose a whole heap of time but for the moment she's doing her best to stay in touch the yellow flags busily wave as they come down towards the chicane 
and the car is out of the gravel bed but the yellow flags there uh, as the marshals sprint back to their post so it'll be clean clear and clean next time around at the chicane as the leaders come through so we've got Neil Twyman leading the way as they come over the line and Sue Darvish are chasing on in second place as the cars come through now at the end of the fourth lap Now you're riding on board here down towards Redgate. Let's have a yeah. look at a lap around here, Charlie. Yeah, we can see. So coming into Redgate now, going down into third gear. Whether the engine is leaking some fluids or whether it's just starting to spit with rain, I can't see out of the commentary box. But coming through Holly Wood as we go down to Craner Curves, keeping a nice tight line. Absolutely flat to the floor, lifting off a little bit now as we change direction. Back on the power again. Old hairpin, fantastically fast corner. These guys turning that massive steering wheel, blipping the throttle. Sounds like he's got it in the wrong gear on this lap. So um, pulling his way up the hill, up to Schwartz Curve. And um, I do believe it must either be the car that's um, got an issue with water on the camera there, or it is actually spitting with rain. We'll um, confirm that very shortly. So coming through McLean's kissing the curb and as I said these guys do have a really good social time with each other they really enjoy their racing but um, they do um, they do also fight very very hard on the track so I think this car's got a bit of a problem I think with the fluids so losing a lot of time on the um, on the power there exiting coppice now once the engine gets up into its rev range again it starts singing again and then it's happy it just doesn't like being on low revs right so down now towards the chicane comes Nick Pellet and closing up onto the tail of the car ahead but he's not going to get there in time to overtake and he almost runs out of road as well that totters up onto the curb yeah I think um, he, he'll be able to see on the windscreen as well and on his visor so um, I think he knows he's got a problem he's slowing down we've still got 11 minutes remaining of the race he's looking down there there you can see so I think he can see that there's a bit of a problem he'll be noticing it on his visor which is a massive shame for our camera car there let's um, hope he either gets it sorted or um, or gets it fixed ready for the next race again so you can see there maybe we can see how much movement they've got in the cars still modern day racing helmets no goggles for this particular driver and you can see him there changing up down the gears there's something definitely wrong with that car you can also see how exposed the drivers are sitting in the fresh air lots of flames being spat out there on the overrun from Nigel Batchelor's supercharged Bentley four and a half as he goes through Redgate corner that is in tenth place at the moment in fact that car and he's chasing after uh, Brandon Smith's Brandon Smith Hilliards I should say MGK3 the ex uh, Lord Howe car that's currently running in ninth place one of the three cars that uh, took part in the 1933 Mini Melia just up ahead of this car you're looking at now of uh, Nigel Batchelor and yeah looking very very good there with the flames you know the guy behind bless him I bet he's um got his sausages out ready toasting for a barbecue you know with the exhaust fumes that are coming out there and you can see his hand as he came down to the old hairpin changing gear outside the car most of these cars have the gear change outside so um, it is a very busy place to be in this car not strapped in flung around very high up big steering wheel lots of body roll um, but great to watch yes. fantastic racing here are the leaders over the line and into the second half of the race now and Neil Twyman after that dreadful start got himself into contention but he's not getting away he's making a race out of this and John Guyatt now up into second place then in the Talbot round the outside of Sue Derbyshire and that Morgan being driven as hard as possible as, as ever Sue drives it like that coming back on the inside look going into Hollywood so the Alfa Romeo is staying ahead at least for the moment just looking delectable as it goes down through the Craner curves isn't it but then in second and third this battle raging on John Guyatt in the Talbot just ahead of Sue Derbyshire in the three-wheel Morgan yeah, just uh, talking to John Guy earlier today, he's um, sort of founder of the, um, the Owners, Drivers and Mechanics Club really and he's very much at the heart of this, um, this championship really. He really does get involved and is a real character uh, um, around, uh, around the pits and on the track. He definitely hasn't lost it no. and a uh, very mature young man, looks fantastic and even looks better on the track, giving um, the Alfa Romeo a really good run for its money from its bad start on lap one. Yeah, what was that bad start all about? Was that miss gear or what was, it, what was going on? I would have thought it looks like a miss gear because um, he's absolutely fine now. And um, I actually think it was Sue that's in um, third place that was struck that said that she'd be very slow off the line, but it actually fell in her favour. So she was the one that said that she wouldn't be quick off the line. So these are the three leaders then, Alfa Romeo, Talbot, Morgan coming down through the traffic 
heading down towards the chicane this time through with eight more minutes still to go. And Neil Twyman, I think, now controlling the pace of the race. So having got himself up front, get the feeling, given the way that he stormed his way through the traffic, he could go off into the distance if he so desired. But he's going to make a race out of this as they come out of the chicane, past the timing line, and working his way through the back markers. I think the next car that he's going to have to negotiate is the the car of John Everett there, the Austin 7 Sports Ulster. Another best lap of the race, though, just done by Twyman. Yeah, looking at the lap times, these cars really are taking a while to get warmed up with the um, sort of the old-fashioned, very classic sort of ply wheels and tyres on these cars are taking a long time to get warm. This car's still cruising round. No, we're in the pits now. Oh, no, no, he, he's, he's going to carry on. He's obviously either got it sorted or thinks, no, there's enough water in there to let him carry on for the rest of the race. Our onboard car is... is holding his own around the outside there as we come into Redgate on the brakes slowing these cars down apparently is very very tricky because they're very big heavy cars it's just the gears and the clutches you need to be careful with as they meander around this fast flowing Donington Park. We saw Nick Pellet going through Redgate a moment ago in the Talbot 105 team car another of the cars in the race with the pre-selected gearbox now Twyman versus Guys is the battle for the race lead and number 14 it is the Alfa Romeo 8C that leads the way original type of 8C, not modern type of 8C of course, a very different shape, but Alfa Romeo of course with this great heritage, bringing back some of the earlier type numbers from more recent cars, out of Coppice Corner goes Neil Twyman, heading off once again down towards the chicane, so having qualified on pole position, the bad start certainly made life hard for him, but he's managed to fight his way back up front, and he's got six and a half more minutes to fend off the challenge of John Guyatt and Sue Derbyshire. It's looking like a little bit like the Cation race we had earlier, you know, the, the leads had changed, now um, now um, Twyman is actually in the lead, um, but just watching the physical sort of movement that um, Derbyshire's having to keep that three-wheeled uh, Morgan in um, in the right place on the track, getting the right racing line. That Alpha, unfortunately for the others, has got a little bit of pace down those straights, but um, through the corners, the others are a little bit more nimble, I think. There you can see the great variety that goes through the British Sports Car Club grids. The cars head into Redgate Corner, number three there. Jerome Fack with the rough superior Alpine that comes from the famous Fack trialling family, son of great trials champion Julian Fack and actually uses this car as well in not just races but uh, trials and hill climbs with the VSCC and fourth place now in fact Jerome Fack has got himself to so he's worked his way nicely up the order as the race has worn on heading now through the Craner curves and behind him in fifth place you've got number eight uh, Josh Beebe the commercial property man with the uh, Fraser Nash TT replica there he is, powering his way up now towards Schwartz's curve. Yeah, I was having a good chat with him earlier, actually, when he's in the driver's briefings. He's only about 23 years old, bless him. He, he looks very, very young. And he's, you know, mastering this Fraser Nash around the Donington Park circuit here. And uh, all getting a little bit wide, actually, as we're talking about it, getting, getting a nice little slide. But, but he seems that sort of character to really enjoy that, you know. It's like a real challenge for him from some of the other racing he does um, throughout the year and fitting in with his, um, with his work life as well. But a uh, bit of a slide there, but great, great character and extremely young in comparison to some of the others. Yes, he's raced on occasions in uh, things like Ginettas, for example. Uh, there you can see the uh, car of... Hamish McNinch, the MGC type Monster Ape, which takes its name from the French circuit where racing took place on its bank circuit pre war, and a bit like Riley Brooklyn's cars taking their names from uh, pre war circuits. So you get the MG Monster Ape and Hamish McNinch coming now down towards the chicane. That car is currently in 17th place, therefore uh, being lapped by the quicker runners, as you can see him working his way right and then left up towards the completion of the lap. So a lap down on the race leaders, but up front, Alfa Romeo still leads the way. We're on lap 10 now with four more minutes of the race to go. There's Josh Beebe turning his way sideways out of Redgate Corner, now towards Hollywood. There's the race leader, Neil Twyman then, making his way up towards Schwantz Curve. It's about to say sedately, but... I don't think he's got a problem. He has been able to just extend that margin over John Guyatt. Do have to do a double take sometimes and remember the relative pace of these cars compared to other cars that we have here. He lapped he in standings, Riley Brooklands. Yeah, he says he, he uh, obviously his son races as well, doesn't he? The leader in the Alfa Romeo. And I said, who's fastest? And he said, naturally, the father is. You know, naturally, <laughs> as you do, the rivalry between father and son in uh, racing is um, absolutely uh, brilliant in, the, um, in this, this sort of style of racing. I think Dad ought to let Joe Twyman have a go in the second race, actually, because Joe is uh, uh, no mean driver in uh, historic 
cars, whether they're single-seaters or touring cars or GT cars. And as I said earlier on, he's going to race this year as part of the reformed Decuria Cost team in the Block Pan Endurance Series for GT cars that kicks off in two weeks' time. So Neil Twyman leads, three minutes to go. And here, Nick Pellet, oh, going for a gap that soon disappeared. Yep, he's still battling on, even though that car is leaking a little bit of water. Seems to have calmed down a little bit now, though. So battling for around, I think it's, believe, sixth and seventh. Yeah, sixth and seventh. And um, it's a great battle, you know, very nearly made contact there. They all do look out for each other's vehicles as they are worth quite a lot of money. And um, they do look after each other. But the Talbot 105 team car on board now coming down the back straight. Remember, the bridge has now disappeared. The Dunlop very famous bridge has vanished now from the back straight. Braking, slowing this heavy car down is a real challenge. Touching the kerb on the right, touching the kerb on the left. Will he get a good run on the exit? Yes, he has actually got a fairly good run on the exit. He's on the wrong side for the red gate overtake, but he looks like he's got enough power there unless he gets boxed in. No, he's still around the outside. Let's have a look at from the out view now. The car that he's going to try and get past here is the X-Rivers Fletcher Invicta in the hands of Trevor Sweet. Number five, there it is. And Trevor Sweet turns his way out of red gate corner with Nick Pellet right up behind him. And the move, move is done, but he's yeah, now gone wide on the exit. So I think he got a little excited there, went in a bit too quick and lost all his momentum. And now you've got some of the other two cars just directly behind him now, swarming over the back of him as he now builds up momentum again and continues with that battle. 20-minute race, quite a long race really for these cars. They've got two of them, as you see there, number 24, which is Nick Pallet and the Talbot coming out of the old hairpin. These sorts of cars have had great success in recent times in historic racing in things like the Le Mans Classic, where there's a pre-war class for the uh, biannual event. And into the pit lane, sad to say, comes number three. Now, that's Jerome Fack, who was in the top four earlier on, but the rough superior Alpine GS down the pit lane. And this is what happened to Nick Pellet going through Redgate. Very, very wide. A couple of wheels in the dirt. Got away with it, though. Lost a place, but was able to continue in the race, albeit having... I lost out again to Trevor Sweet. So Neil Twyman now leading the way, and the gap is building. 2.3 seconds, so he's had his fun. Playtime is over. He's on his last lap uh, with just under a minute of the race to go. And now I think on the last lap, Charlie, he's going to prove who's boss. Yes, definitely. Talking to him earlier, he seemed very confident, and everyone in the paddock saying how um, that his car is pretty much well sorted and, and he's got a lot of power. However, for second place, Sue Derbyshire, who is in traffic, looking to put a lap on Clive Temple there, the man that runs the motorsport course at Cranfield University, goes through, and she is trying to fend off John Guyot. So those two who've been battling race long are still together, making their way up towards Schwartz Curve, little and large in terms of the cars, isn't it? The tiny little Morgan three-wheeler just being able to keep at bay at John Guyot there with the Talbot Largo coming up now towards the exit of McLean's, then towards Coppice Corner for the last time. And she's nearly put in one of the fastest laps of her race on the last lap, the 139.55. And remember, Gaia was actually second for um, a, a fair amount of time. So she's definitely holding her own. As you can see, her body really moving in that car, keeping that car as stable as she possibly can around the long coppice right-hand bend as she now approaches the new chicane here at Donington through which will come Neil Twyman in a moment to win the first of the two BSCC pre-war sports car races of the day here at Donington Park. John Guyot wriggling his way through traffic up towards the line and Neil Twyman from pole position, a bad start but a race win, comes through then to score victory in the delectable Alfa Romeo 8C. Second just goes to Sue Derbyshire by three tenths of a second. John Guyot not letting her get away over those last few laps. So uh, Sue Derbyshire who led early on, John Guyot had a turn in the lead. Neil Twyman wins it and locks a task wheel at Coppice as that was Trevor Sweet versus Nick Pellet. They're side by side coming out of the corner. Trevor Sweet almost running out of road there and up alongside him then comes Nick Pellet, the uh, Talbot up alongside as they drop down towards the chicane. Well, he's on the right line to make the move stick here. Yeah, he's on the right line. The car's snaking a little bit as he gets on the brakes. Is he going to do what he did at Redgate and go too wide? Oh yes, oh, yes he is. He is. <laughs> yep, it was going to happen, wasn't it? But the curbs have curbs to a car of that height really isn't going to bother him, I don't think. Can he get the momentum on the exit? It's still going to be close, but no, loses the place. So once he gets the move, he just needs to not get so excited and get on the brakes maybe a little bit earlier. There you go. One more lesson passed on. And thumbs up across there to Trevor Sweet. They had a great battle on that last lap. And as you'd expect in the VSCC, it's all smiles. Everybody's had a great race. Uh, those two that we've just seen finishing fifth and sixth because they were uh, behind Josh Beebe. Now, this is how it looked from the outside. 
So yeah, you can see the car just snaking around, a very small amount, the green car on the inside, turns in, gets a bit of understeer, way too fast <laughs> on the way in. Clunk. And look at that, doesn't even touch the bottom, the bottom of the car, not a problem to these cars. Guy on the left looking at him going, thanks very much for the place, matey. And a big thumbs up for both of them at the very end. So they really enjoyed it. What's a, what's a, what's a place lost at the end when they've had so much fun, you know? Well, that's the top six. Neil Twyman's magnificent Alfa Romeo 8C beats the Morgan of Sue Derbyshire. And then the uh, Talbot Largo of John Guyatt for Josh Beebe's Fraser Nash. TT Replica is fourth ahead of Trevor Sweets in Victor and Nick Pellet's Talbot in sixth place. Well, there's the winner, Neil Twyman, the man from pole position. So he takes one win. No pressure on his son Joe for when Joe's season starts for a curious cost. But if Dad can do it, Joe, and we'll have another race from the VSCC cars a little bit later on. It's not the only uh, historic element of today's races because we've got the two Formula Junior races, front and rear engine cars from a slightly later period, still to look forward to as well. Time to drool, isn't it, as it comes towards you? The Alfa Romeo 8C then victorious with the green clover leaf on the flanks of the car. And his uh, initials that you can see there, NT on the, the front lights as well, maybe to either hold the light together <laughs> or it's just a little bit of a family um, tradition to have the initials on the front lights. I don't know what happened at the start. Okay. I don't know what happened at the start. Oh, dear, I thought I was going to get hit. It was a bit touching guy. John did very well to get past me. That says it all. Jenny, he's all yours. Thank you and congratulations to you, Neil Twyman. Just tell us much. what happened at the start, not the best. Well, I of had stuff. a nightmare. Um, just something wrong with the fuel system. I put my foot down for the start, there was nothing there. And then I thought some, something's going to hit me. And all these cars came past, so I managed to get going, just chugging away. And I fiddled with that fuel tank down there. And all of a sudden, well, no, I did a lap. And I was just about to come into the pits. And I just fiddled with it, and all of a sudden it went you know, beautifully again. So then I had a bit of a chase on and uh, I didn't think I was going to catch them up and I managed to get past, uh, I think all of them, didn't I? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. You, you definitely won the race, so you got past all of them. <laughs> That's a relief. Yeah. Just tell us a little bit, a very short history about the car because it's absolutely gorgeous. It's a really um, early Targa Florio type Alfa Romeo. It's, it's kind of like it's got its bodywork missing at the back, but it's meant to be like that. It was used in road races um, and then later on they were converted to sort of um, complete sports car body but it's a very basic sort of racing out from air well we've had it's still um, pretty quick now it certainly is and we've had a twitter in from flying pig racing asking okay. about the value of the grid and um, i'll work it out by the value of your car right. so how much is this beautiful car worth do you know i don't know <laughs> <laughs> a lot a lot he five says. big ones i'd say wow that is quite big in fact there were about 25 cars on the grid so by my estimation that's probably over just over a million pounds yes yeah probably yes, yes. so it's good that it's come back in one piece and all ready for the I mean, second well, race yes yeah we're going to do a bit of twiddling with the uh, fuel tank see what went wrong with that but uh, yeah we'll be up for the second race okay well let's uh, present you with your trophy i think mike stripe is behind us and um, yep. the uh Neil, congratulations he's well. the club secretary <laughs> of the uh, Vintage Sports Car Club handing over the trophy. So there we go, we answer the question about a million pounds worth of cars on the grid. Lots of people getting in touch on Twitter. Thank you to Glyn Humps who says, how many live race days are there this year? Well, on Motors TV, we have two more race days coming up for you, May and also in June. Back holidays, listen out for them.